Hey everyone, I'm recording this video on my Mac and I'm learning how to use QuickTime Player. And I also learned how to take the video and go on YouTube and upload it. So that's not what I'm covering today, but it's pretty cool now that I can use it as another source to record a video. But today I just wanted to talk about my new braille display. It's the Orbit Reader 20, and it's really cool. It's pretty inexpensive as far as braille displays go because they can be in the thousands, um, and this one wasn't, so that was nice. A little more affordable, at least. And I'm able to read braille whenever I want now, which is really cool because I didn't really have a lot of opportunity to. Um, I always just use voiceover on my iPhone and iPad and Mac, which is excellent, but sometimes I just want to read Braille. So this gives me an option by taking this display and pairing it to either my iPhone, iPad, or Mac. It can also be paired to a Windows laptop with JAWS, um, and you can upgrade it also. Um, I, it's the Orbit 20, Orbit Reader 20 Plus, and that will get you uh, Linux compatibility and a few other uh, options as well. Um, so if you were to get one and try to set it up, um, if you try to use your iOS device or iPad, you would go to Accessibility and VoiceOver and then into Braille and down to choose braille display and then it should uh, show you that the orbit 20 is there um, just like when you set up airpods for the first time and you pair them it'll sh it'll show them and then you can select yes i want to pair them and then once you do it it'll automatically be paired for the for in the future also um, for Mac, you go to VoiceOver Utility, and then you go into Braille Category, and then you go to the Displays tab, and then it should show up there. And then once it's paired, every time you go back into it, um, like if you turn the device on, it should automatically pair with whatever device that you have. Um, and I recommend that you turn on the Orbit Reader first, and then you um, turn on the device that you want to pair it with. Um, it works best that way for the best results, I find. Um, so for iPhone and iPad, the contracted Braille is already there, so it automatically uh, switches there for you. Um, a lot of Braille users tend to use contracted Braille. Um, and then for Mac, you'll have to actually select it. Um, you go to the Translations tab for that. Um, so. I've used it for a week now. Today is actually, um, today, last week, last Saturday I got it. Um, and I've read books with it so far, and I've done a little web browsing with it. Um, I look through some emails, but I really mainly like it for being able to, um, to read books with it. Um, I, I love to read, so it's just nice to be able to choose if I want to listen or um, read it in Braille now. Um, and also, there is a, uh, there's an 8-dot Braille pad that you can actually type with also on it, so you can input text into any field. Um, and this is what the machine actually looks like, the display itself. So... You can see all the dots. Um, and so when you first turn the machine on, it'll 
uh, give you some directions and a menu that shows all, all the options and stuff. And if I were to press the up arrow and the selector key at the same time, that gets you the uh, main menu. And then um, I can see like the battery status and I can see the firmware, which they update once a year. Um, so that's nice. Um, and then you have these uh, buttons on the sides that are not part. There's uh, four buttons and then a selector um, also here. Um, and they're a little bit underneath the, uh, the braille that you would uh, type with. And those help you navigate through the menus. Um, and then there's the space bar and two uh, other braille dots. Um, but then these on the sides, there's these buttons that help you scroll so you can scroll back and forth through documents or whatever you're working on. And so um, you can see the braille move when I interact with it and push the buttons. It does make a little bit of noise, um, you know, when you're using it, but it's not that bad. I think it's worth it, especially for it not being that expensive of, of a device itself. Um, so those are my thoughts. I really like it. I do give it two thumbs up. Um, I have to get used to how to interact with it with different devices because um, if you touch the iPad, for instance, it will actually move. The braille will move wherever you put your finger, like the cursor. And the same applies to using a Mac. If you're pressing the buttons and moving around, it'll move um, and... and it'll, the cursor will be right where the text that you moved um, to when you're, when you're pressing the keys, um, like the direction keys. So that's pretty much all I really have for right now. There's a lot to learn with this device. I know that I'll be learning stuff for, for quite a while because I know that there's voiceover commands that you can use with it and stuff. So, but those are my thoughts for now and I'm really happy to have it. I still have that I can't believe it's mine kind of feeling, but so thanks for watching today's video. I hope you liked it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.